Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today you join me, I'm in West Cork and I'm in a place called Long Strand. And I don't think it's a place I've brought you to before. The area here is absolutely beautiful, like is all of West Cork. But on this beach alone here, it's known for it being a long beach, hence the name, Long Strand. But I've came across now these set of rocks here and it's nice where the water is just coming in and lapping around those rocks. They're actually really nice and great textures as well within those. So what I'm trying to do at the moment here is wait like a wave like this, wait for it to come in and then I'm just going to take a sequence of different shots as the water wraps around these rocks. Now I'm composing the shot as well here. There's a set of rocks that are on the uh, right hand side of the screen here leading out to a bit of rock that's on the headland as well there so by composing that with this in the bottom left and then the ones on the right hand side kind of arcing out then with the water as it maneuvers around the base of these rocks I do think it'll be a nice shot settings as well at the moment here I'm at a quarter of a second and I'm having to use my 0.9 ND grad as well just to make sure that the sky isn't blown out. Now the sun is going to be setting over to the right so I'm not going to deal with any harsh light once particularly once it drops below the headland that's just to the right of me here but what I'm hoping for is if you can see the clouds that are in the sky here hopefully they'll catch uh, in the setting sun and will light up but this is the first one anyway that I have. I probably won't have that for my sunset shot because I'm going to move over here to some more interesting rocks as well. But yeah, a great shot now to kind of start me off. I'll give you a look at this one here and then uh, hopefully if I get it and uh, yeah, I get the right set of times, I'm going to move over then to the right hand side as the sun will drop. Probably around maybe 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes until that happens anyway. So plenty of time, plenty of opportunities. Let's go and let's see how we get on today. haven't had to move far now for my second composition and I'm using the same rocks that I would have used a moment ago here the ones that were on the right hand side of the frame but now I'm making them the prominent aspect within the image and as you can see as these waves are coming in here they're breaking nicely below me so I'm capturing a shot as the water comes in like this right now but then I wait as always now wait for it to retreat and what you get then is the lovely streaks of water as it goes back out and I think with these rocks here it looks really really impressive now as I'm here as well now taking these shots I noticed the way the water is breaking over the rocks and cascading them over the right hand side so there's a lovely sheen as well that's coming in from the light so I'm going to move now to that to grab that for my third composition here all with it was at this moment that my technology decided to fail me and unbeknown to me at the time my audio would be no more I'll show you these shots and then I'll be back All was not lost, however, 
and as given the conditions and the shots I managed to capture after this, I'll take you through all of the details of what I experienced and how I dealt with each in the form of a rich sounding voiceover. The same set of rocks would be my next composition, and as you can see here, the waves as they broke over the rocks would shoot through the gap and cascade into the scene. So I framed up my shot with the larger of the rocks to the bottom left of the frame, the gap just towards the middle and the rest of the scene filling the remainder. My settings for these shots were a quarter of a second and a half a second, and I did this to really capture the power, flow and of course the texture of the water as it spilled over and created some great shapes in the sand below me. The light was just starting to get interesting now, albeit diffused, which meant I would need to be careful not to blow my highlights. I'll show you these shots next before we move on to the next composition. As I wandered over further along the beach, I arrived at a scene that I had to really think hard about how I was going to compose. Flowing water from the river was reaching the sea, creating a constant flow of water. And to combine this with the waves as they arrived on shore, I felt it would be a nice shot. So I composed my shot with the fresh water arriving from the bottom right. The rocks that it cascades over were orientated up and over to the right, towards the other larger rocks in the headland. All I needed now was to wait for a wave to arrive, crash against the rocks and mix with the river water. Settings for this shot were similar to my last, one quarter of a second and a half a second, to keep some texture as well as show the movement in both bodies of water. I again needed to be careful however, as the sky was particularly bright above the scene due to the setting sun in the west, and when you combine this with what was a dark scene in shadows, the dynamic range needed here was going to be quite high. It was a matter of waiting now to get the right wave to fill the frame. A challenge further added to due to the tide actually going out. Nonetheless, I still managed to grab a couple of shots and I'll show you those next. While reviewing my images and looking at the flow of the incoming waves, I realised that my moment for the ideal juxtaposition had passed, and as the sky was finally about to yield some colour, I opted to put on my 10 stop filter and go for a long exposure, and after a 30 second test shot, I knew I would need to go longer. One, because the light in that corner of the beach was quickly disappearing, and two, the ebb and flow of the waves would need an ultra long exposure to be able to fill the frame with the many waves that would tenderly arrive at the rocks below me. So I put the camera on bulb mode and let it count up past three minutes. And here's the results.
sun had now set, but my shoot wasn't over, and looking back towards the east, I once again was drawn back to the first set of rocks that had delivered my earlier shots. The tide had now receded so much at this stage that they were no longer being subjected to crashing waves, but were instead being lapped tenderly by the tail end of each wave as it just managed to reach them. To the east also was the headland of Galley Head, and sitting proudly on this is Galley Head Lighthouse. And finally, above this, the clouds seemed to have some residual colour. As I approached the scene, I opted to not photograph the entire rocks for this one. I instead used the last rock only, and placed it at the bottom left of the frame, to act as an anchor as such. It was then I noticed the great detail that this rock had, which I felt would work well for an image. So framing up my shot, I left enough room at the bottom for an incoming wave to fill albeit as it retreated back out to sea and left some stunning curves and lines behind it from its foam. All of this I could capture with a longer exposure, so I put my camera at two seconds and hit that shutter as the wave reached its peak and started to then turn. The light was fading fast now, and I hoped that I would be rewarded with the lighthouse light being turned on to add something more to the top of the frame. What an eventful afternoon, so eventful I hadn't even noticed myself but I do hope that my voiceover hasn't ruined the adventure for you. I'll leave you now with these final images, and if it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and until the next time, schlongafog.